FMG Fireade, uh, PSM, Preventive and Social Medicine people, uh, pretty high yield and one of the important subject you have to focus for FMG. And uh, I, can, I can guarantee you that uh, this PSM is a ruler of your morning paper. So obviously you have to know every nukes and corners where you can able to get the MCQs. Okay, I bet, I bet all of you people have already studied the PSM. Uh, right now, this is a rapid revision, so I can't be able to cover you every little topic, my uh, my students. So uh, we're gonna cover only the few things. So don't mistake, this is a rapid review session, and this is a final moment that you need to know a very few things. Okay, uh, well, let's focus about uh, what are the important things you need to know, and we will discuss about a few highlights of your PSM. Okay, preventive and social medicine. Okay, so on a first chapter of your preventive and social medicine deals with the history of medicine. Uh, there are some fathers. Uh, it's not like you have to remember your own father. You also need to remember a lot of fathers here. Okay, uh, so the first one is your uh, father of homeopathy. That is a Samuel Henneman, pretty important MCQ. Most of the time they used to ask like uh, who is the father of homeopathy. And the second is your father of medicine that obviously everyone knows that is a Hippocrates. So I don't need to highlight it anyway. That's also a pretty, pretty important uh, MCQ. And the uh, next important thing is like a uh, father of epidemiology that is a John Snow. Uh, why? Because like uh, John Snow was doing a one who is uh, finding out like a contamination of water causes a cholera, which in turn makes a John Snow a father of epidemiology. Okay. So since uh, John Snow is making a, uh, since the John Snow is doing a research on cholera and God is a uh, father of epidemiology title so obviously the father of uh, public health title goes to cholera okay so the father of public health is cholera uh, uh, remember it is always that the father of public health is not a person it is a disease okay so you should never forget this and second is the father of indian surgery so the father of indian surgery is shushruta very important mcq people uh, the father of indian surgery is shushruta that you should you should always need to know uh, while the father of Indian medicine is Charaka. Uh, you know that the father of uh, Western medicine he is a Hippocrates and the father of uh, modern surgery he is Ambrose Bohr. Ambrose Bohr is a father of uh, uh, modern surgery. Sorry. Uh, father of modern surgery but uh, father of Indian surgery is Shushruta. While father of Indian medicine is Charaka while modern medicine is uh, Hippocrates. And uh, there are certain terminologies pretty important. Who coined the term vaccine? The, the guy who coined the term vaccine is your uh, Louis Pasteur. Well, who coined the term vaccination? The guy who coined the term vaccination is Edward Jenner. He is also one of the important scientists you need to focus. So this is all about your fathers and the honors people. And second important thing you have to know about your uh, country honor is like what are the first country to do the certain things on a healthcare industry, okay? So the first country who made a, who completely socialized medicine, another important MCQ, Russia. Okay, another important MCQ that is Russia is the first country who socialized the medicine completely. And the first country who invented the compulsory sickness insurance for all of his country people that is Germany. Okay, and fingerprint bureau was first formed by the country India. Uh, as we all know that the location is Calcutta. Uh, sorry, Kolkata. Okay. Uh, these are pretty important uh, and high yield MCQ people that you should know uh, very clearly. And second is there are certain terminologies you have to know isolation and quarantine. So isolation means that the person is the diseased person we are separating. So the separation of cases is happening in a, separation of cases is happening in isolation while separation of healthy individuals from the cases is happening in a quarantine okay mm. pretty high yield and uh, next the parameters of your uh, certain parameters are important that is the concepts of uh, health is pretty high yield so human development index so the first important concept you have to know is your human developmental index so human developmental index what are, what is the indian value for human developmental index that is 0 0.640 pretty high yield you should always know that 0 0.640 and what are the parameters which uh, which makes your human developmental index that is a life expectancy at birth 
life expectancy at birth number two is knowledge and number three is income okay so these three are the parameter which is used for the uh, human developmental index so the mcq may be in the pattern of like all of the following are the parameters of your human developmental index except so you know that the life expectancy at birth and knowledge and income are the thing among that a life expectancy is a positive mortality indicator that is also pretty important mcq you have to know i am highlighting only the mcq people don't feel bored uh, obviously psm is a very vague and dry subject so you have to learn everything so pqli pqli of here india is uh, 65 and what are the parameters of your pqli uh, life expectancy at one year of age literacy rate and infant mortality rate literacy rate and infant mortality rate are the parameters of your pqli and next is your sullivan index that is a life expectancy minus duration of disability okay so sullivan index formula is pretty high yield that you should never miss so one dally is equal to yll plus ylt okay so uh, next important thing is like what are your socio-economic indicators housing family size literacy rate available per capita calorie gnp per capita growth rate unemployed level and dependency ratio so the question may be asked like all of the following are the parameters of your uh, socioeconomic indicators except all of the following which is used for uh, assessing your socioeconomic conditions except so there may be some of the additional uh, things they may add instead of these eight uh, factors or eight indicators okay so next important parameters you have to know is your case fatality rate so the case fatality rate means like a killing power of your disease that is how many people have been died on a particular condition divided by total number of people who got that condition into one another that is for example the person is uh, affected with the yellow fever so the denominator would be how many person how many people have been affected with the yellow fever while the numerator would be like how many people died by getting a after getting a low fever okay so the number of death of a particular condition divided by number of cases into 100 so the cfr rates are pretty important and high yield people so cfr for rabies it is always 100 percent and cfr for low fever it is 80 percent and cfr for chicken box it is less than one percent so you have to know the few things like either a rabies that is a maximum and chicken box that is a minimum okay so less than one percent okay next you have to know about surveillance so there are three types of surveillance you have to know one is your active surveillance uh, one is your active surveillance and another one is your passive surveillance and third one is your sentinel surveillance so active surveillance means the doctor who goes to patient and monitor the cases for example in malaria control program the health worker have to go to each and every person's home and they have to find the case or like they have to find like all the parameters have been monitored among the crowd or the public people in a high risk area okay so, so that means a health worker that is a health care system is going to that pay people or the high risk population to find out the cases so this type of surveillance is active surveillance and next is a type of surveillance is passive surveillance so this passive surveillance means the patient goes to the doctor and the doctor accidentally finds the case for example in a passive surveillance what happens is consider the patient is having a high fever consider the patient is having a high fever and the high fever who is uh, the high fever patient is going and approaching the doctor and the doctor finds out that the patient is having a dengue so this type of uh, uh, surveillance is known as passive surveillance and I have to mention one MCQ or I want to I emphasize one MCQ here that the first identifiable case first identifiable case or first clinically detected case is known as index case is known as index case okay so the first case which is uh, approaching the healthcare system or the first clinically diagnosed case B is 
your index case and the third important uh, surveillance or the third important type of your surveillance is sentinel surveillance so in sentinel surveillance we obviously look for the missing cases or undiagnosed cases so the detection of missing uh, cases is it is always a sentinel surveillance pretty important mcq people you have to know it very thoroughly okay so the next important thing is like a iceberg phenomena you know about iso iceberg phenomena right so the you know that uh, the iceberg like uh, for example we have our uh, iceberg up and we have our iceberg low so this portion what we see this portion what we see is your floating tip is your floating tip and this is your line of demarcation and this is your submerged portion okay submerged portion so iceberg phenomenon is applicable to most of the diseases so the floating tip means the symptomatic cases which we have is your is uh, corresponds to the is compared to the floating tip of the uh, iceberg while the submerged portion that is a large submerged portion is a hidden cases or undiagnosed case so is a hidden case or undiagnosed case while the line or line of demarcation means a line between or the situation between the apparent and the inapparent infection apparent and inapparent infection so there are certain diseases which do not follow this iceberg phenomenon that is a, a very important uh, mcq so what are the diseases which do not follow this iceberg phenomenon so remember with the mnemonic of mtr rava mtr rava m stands for measles and t stands for tetanus r stands for rabies and another rava's r stands for rubella okay so a measles tetanus rabies and rubella are the diseases which do not follow the iceberg phenomena so the mcqs will be like all of the following diseases will follow the iceberg phenomena except so they give you one of these four options as a exception or maybe they given in reverse order like all of the following diseases do not follow the iceberg phenomena except so this is how you have to emphasize the question and this is how you have to understand the question and analyze the question and answer the question people so next important thing is like your phases of disease control pretty high yield thing you have to know so number 1 is your transmission of agent so decrease in the transmission of agent so for example for a disease to occur it have to be certain pathogen like for example we are talking about a communicable disease since it is a community medicine we have to talk about a what type of organism which is transmitting the diseases to multiple people yes or no so if we decrease the transmission of a, a transmission of a particular agent which causes the disease it results in the control of the disease in that particular population isn't it or not so this is a first phase of your disease control that is a um, decrease in the transmission of agent okay so what is meant by disease elimination and what is meant by disease eradication so when you uh, when you restrict the transmission of the agent automatically what will happen the number of uh, incident rate will be decreased that is a person who have a disease will be decreased yes or no so the decrease in a disease there is no disease in a particular area but the organism is present so there is no disease in a particular area but the organism is present means this is known as disease elimination this is known as disease elimination and it is a geographical phenomena that is a one country or state or region may be involved so for example india is a country which eliminated till now four diseases namely guinea worm or dracunculiasis guinea worm or dracunculiasis and the second is like a leprosy and the third is like a yas and fourth is like a tetanus maternal and neonatal tetanus okay so these are the four diseases where uh, in which the india had been eliminated till now pretty important mcq you have to know and uh, what is meant by disease eradication so disease eradication means that the organism is not exist at all so tearing out of the organism or tearing out of the disease from the root so this is what the keyword they used to give people 
on the MCQ, tearing out from the root is known as root of the disease is known as disease eradication. Disease eradication. So it is a uh, worldwide phenomena. So till now, uh, world had eradicated only one disease. That is your smallpox. That is your smallpox. Smallpox have been eradicated on 1980. On 1980, especially May 8, 1980. Only the year is important for MCI. So no issues about that. So next is your uh, levels of prevention. Very, very high yield topic people. So, so focus now. Okay. Because you may uh, expect a one MCQ from this levels of prevention. Okay. You should never forget. Uh, like uh, there are four types of prevention. One is your primordial prevention, primary prevention, secondary prevention, and tertiary prevention. Okay. Primordial, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Primordial, primary, secondary, and tertiary. So, what is mean by primordial prevention? So, the prevention of the risk factor, that is a risk factor prevention. For example, you know that the obesity will result in a will complicate your diabetes mellitus. So, the or obesity patient may have a risk of coronary artery disease. So, uh, the patient uh, risk factor is obesity for coronary artery disease. The condition is coronary artery disease and the risk factor is obesity and we are telling the people to walk we are educating the people to do lot of physical exercise to prevent that obesity so the prevention of obesity in turn leads to the prevention of coronary artery disease so the uh, risk factor prevention method is known as your primordial prevention is known as primordial prevention okay now what is happening here now that you know, you understand what is meant by primordial prevention. Now you have to know what is meant by primary prevention. So primary prevention means a disease prevention in single word. In a single word, it is a disease prevention. That is vaccination. That is a vaccination. For example, we are having a the meningococcus. So the people have a chance of getting meningococcal meningitis because meningococcal is a Meningococcus is an organism which survives on your uh, environment. So obviously preventing uh, preventing us from getting a meningococcal infection, that is the organism is present, disease is already present, but you have to prevent yourself from the disease. So you are generating, you are giving a vaccination for the prophylaxis. So this prophylaxis type or preventing you from the disease is your primary prevention. And second is your next important thing is your secondary prevention. So what is mean by secondary prevention? Early diagnosis and treatment. Early diagnosis and treatment. For example, I am getting a fever and I am going to doctor and I am getting my results of your my blood test. And my blood test shows that uh, there is an elevated WBC count. Obviously, I am having a, any sort of infection. So, and I am getting a treatment for that infection and I am getting cured. So, why I am getting that cure, uh, why I am getting a yearly cure? Because I have been diagnosed yearly as I am infected. So, how I am getting yearly diagnosed? Because I am approaching the clinic yearly. Yes or no? So, this type of prevention is a secondary prevention because I am preventing that infection to progress and to generate a multiple side effect. Uh, so, I am cutting out that infection in a yearly stage. So, yearly diagnosis and yearly treatment is a part of secondary infection. So, for example, what is mean by tertiary infection? So, tertiary infection is a type of infection uh, where you will get a, I am, I am getting an infected, I am getting a fever and I am not caring about anything and uh, I am letting my bacteria to grow in my body. Now what happened, consider I am getting that uh, staphylococcus aureus on my body and this is happening due to the food poisoning and I am not uh, stopping with the food poisoning and I am letting my bacteria to grow further, further and further and which in turn entered and which in turn entered in generation of this bacteria or a growing of bacteria in my body which goes and directly attack my heart walls and I am getting my infective endocarditis. Now what I am doing, now only I am realizing something bad is happening to my body. So I have to go and I have to monitor that thing 
So I am going and monitoring that pain. So after I am uh, going to the hospital, the doctor said already your heart valves are damaged. Your heart valves contains a vegetation of bacteria. All we can do is we can try to save you from death. So the disability limitation is your tertiary prevention. Disability prevention is your tertiary uh, prevention because they can't able to do anything with that condition. All they can do is that they can able to control the complications. Control the complication. This type of prevention is known as disability, sorry, tertiary prevention. Very, very important MCQ, uh, high yield content people because you obviously can expect a one single question from this part. Okay. So don't make a mistake in the primordial, primary, secondary and tertiary prevention. Okay. And next important thing you have to know about a certain terminologies and what are these terminologies. For example, disease. What is mean by disease? So the consider the patient this is is known as disease. So this is that is a patient is having a normal function but the patient is now behaving abnormally. So the condition of a patient with the abnormal function or loss of function or the person cannot able to do that normal function then the person then the condition is known as disease. So what is meant by disability? So for example uh, the restricted activity from the normal function or loss of activity from the normal function. Normal function. What is mean by impairment? So the loss or abnormality of normal structure and function is known as impairment. For example, renal impairment or uh, liver impairment. That is a renal impairment means the kidney cannot be able to uh, function properly. So the kidney is impaired. So the kidney structure and function is damaged. So the kidney cannot able to do its normal function and so the kidney's normal structure is defective. So this type of uh, thing is known as impairment. While handicap means a non-fulfillment of the role of normal individual. Non-fulfillment of the role of normal individual. Okay. So for example, this uh, handicap means, uh, for example, we can say like a, what uh, we can correlate the disease, disability, impairment, and handicap. Consider the person is having a high glucose level. The, that means the consider the person is having a diabetes mellitus. It is a condition. Uh, we can't able to say that it is a disease, which is a condition. Okay. Now what happened because of that, his uh, insulin, uh, his pancreas cannot able to synthesize insulin. So, or maybe his pancreas can able to synthesize insulin, but his body cannot able to take that insulin. So, automatically the uh, insulin is disabled. So, disability. What happened because of that? Because of that he is having an impairment in the body. Because of that he is a, what type of impairment he is having? For example, the complication of diabetes is your gangrene, gas gangrene. Okay. So, the gangrene on the stomach, sorry, on the food. So, the foot gangrene is your impairment. Now what happened? We are amputating it and he cannot able to walk normally. So this uh, improper non-fulfillment of the normal role of human being. So what is normal role of human being here? Walking. So the walking is affected here. So when the walking is affected, then obviously the person cannot able to walk and do his own work. He is not totally productive to the society. So the person becomes handicapped. Okay, so this is what the terminology is like uh, important terminologies you have to know. Next you have to know is like ICD-11, the highlights of your ICD-11 is 3 volumes and 22 chapters. Pretty important MCQ. Maybe, may or may not be, may expect. But uh, another important MCQ I want to do here is like what is the important line of your death certificate or essence of death certificate. Essence of Death certificate is pretty important. The important line is like a line 1C. Line 1C is pretty important uh, one. And this is an important MCQ you have to know. Okay. So next important thing is like a, a epidemiological tools are quite really important. And there are certain parameters. You can always expect one question from this topic. Okay. So, the epidemiological tools are divided into three categories. I am organizing into three categories. Namely, rate, ratio and proportion. So, what is mean by rate? 
okay what is mean by what are the parameters is a rate one so we have our infant mortality rate and incidence rate okay so this incidence rate means the number of new cases divided by population at risk that is a person how many persons are getting a disease divided by total population uh, is capable of getting those disease in 2000 so this uh, this will uh, indicate your incidence rate okay and the second uh, rate here is infant mortality rate that is the number of infant death divided by number of live birth number of infant death divided by number of live birth into 1000 pretty important mcq infant mortality rate so these two are the important rates you have to know and the next is what are the important ratios you are having so the important ratios you are having is maternal mortality rate so remember this maternal mortality rate is not a rate it is a ratio you should uh, the people always make a mistake maternal mortality rate is never a rate it is a ratio okay so and maternal mortality rate the multiplication is 100000 so that means a 1 lakh what the people used to do is maternal mortality rate they knew from the infant mortality rate like a number of uh, infant death by number of live birth so similarly maternal mortality rate means number of maternal death divided by number of live birth but the multiplication criteria is different with the IMR and the MMR for IMR it is into 1000 but for MMR it is 1 lakh so most of the people what they used to think is like a number of maternal death divided by number of live birth into 1000 but actually the answer is 1 lakh 1 lakh is the only thing we use as here is in your maternal mortality rate next is your sex ratio so the sex ratio is pretty important sex ratio number of females divided by number of males in 2000 okay next is like a relative risk pretty important one incident of exposed divided by incident of non exposed the formula for relative risk is a high yield formula for maternal mortality rate is high yield because the formula of maternal mortality rate was asked in fmg june 2019 and the formula of a relative risk was asked in fmg december 2018 and so on okay next you have your proportion so the another important mistake people used to do is like a prevalence rate prevalence rate is not a rate prevalence rate is a proportion you should never forget this mostly they will ask us what prevalence rate is since the rate is given people used to mark the rate but this prevalence is actually a proportion while maternal mortality rate is actually a ratio okay prevalence rate is like a number of new cases plus old cases divided by total population into 100 in a proportion it is always 100 multiplication so in a proportion it is always 100 multiplication okay so next important proportion is your case fatality rate another important rate case fatality rate is a proportion number of death divided by total number of case into 100 for example the person is infected with certain diseases like mm, uh, what is that uh, cfr for example like a rabies how many people are uh, getting rabies this should be your denominator how many people are getting died uh, with the rabies that should be a numerator so like a so the cfr or rabies is 100 percent another important mcq you should never miss it is always 100 percent okay cfr for rabies okay these are the important concepts you have to know uh, regarding the epidemiological tools and second is like a distribution uh, distribution may be like a short term distribution periodic fluctuation and long term fluctuation short term distribution means a common source and a propagated and a slow distribution so the common source is again divided into single exposure and continuous exposure single exposure and continuous exposure so the single exposure the important example is bhopal gas tragedy bhopal gas tragedy you should never forget because they will always ask this question Bhopal gas tragedy is what type of epidemic single exposure or point source epidemic single exposure or point source epidemic okay 
you should never forget and a propagated epidemic distribution is like a person to person or like a transmission from the anthropod or maybe like a transmission from the animals and so on for example nipah virus which was a, uh, recently a epidemic in kerala like a, a consumption of the fruits or like a bats can able to uh, do these things uh, transmit the disease okay so uh, periodic fluctuation you have a seasonal trend and cyclical trend so long term fluctuation is pretty low yield so i don't want to discuss here okay next is like epidemiology epidemiology is again divided into two types namely observational epidemiology and ep experimental epidemiology so experimental i am going to discuss only the few parameters but in the observation we can do little bit uh, deeper okay observational epidemiology is again divided into descriptive and analytical epidemiology descriptive epidemiology we had already discussed with the distribution of diseases while analytical epidemiology is divided into four categories namely case control cohort cross sectional and ecological case control uh, okay there are four type of analytical epidemiology case control cohort cross sectional and ecological so this is what we have been discussing before case control cohort cross sectional and ecological okay so what is meant by case control study case control study is also known as a retrospective study case control study is also known as a retrospective study and the study uh, case control study is useful in study of rare diseases study of rare diseases and strength of association of case study is odds ratio very very important mcq people you should never forget and the formula for odds ratio is ad by e <coughs> uh formula for odds ratio is ad by bc so what is meant by ad by bc consider draw a table like a 2 by 2 table like the person exposure is present or not and person with the diseases or not exposed non exposed while positive with the disease and negative with the disease like for example like a b c d and the odds ratio would be ad by bc okay so this is the strength of association of your case control study and case control study is a retrospective study that is a, it is a backward study so for example we have a cause cause and we for example we are smoking and smoking is a risk factor for lung cancer smoking causes lung cancer is or no so lung cancer is a disease while cause is smoking so from smoking to lung cancer if we drag then that type of study is your prospective study that is a cause to effect study but what we are doing here from lung cancer we are checking out whether the patient is developing having exposure to smoking or not yes or no so this type of study that is a effect to cause study so this effect to cause study is also known as backward study okay effect to cause study is also known as backward study and next important epidemiological study is your cohort study and the cohort study it is a simultaneous study of multiple risk factor simultaneous study of multiple risk factors and it may be a prospective study or it may be a retrospective study or it may be a mixed study that is either a prospective study or also combined prospective and retrospective study okay and strength of association of your cohort study is relative risk so odds ratio it is always case control relative risk it is always cohort and incidence rate can be calculated from your cohort study incident rate can be calculated from your cohort study you should never forget people incident rate can be calculated from your cohort study and this cohort study is effect to cause study sorry cause to effect study this cohort study is cause to effect study study so the examples have been asked one once like a framingham heart study 
is an example of very very important MCQ because uh, it was asked on uh, your December 2018 sorry 2017 December they asked this question Framingham Heart Study is an example of so most people what they used to think is like it is a cohort study so what the people used to mark was like cohort study before but now what they have on that exam what they had asked was Framingham Heart Study is a type of prospective cohort study retrospective cohort study unmixed cohort study and none of the above okay so what the people used to say do is like a uh, people most of the people used to do like it is association of a risk factors of your cardiovascular disease yes or no so what they made is like they most of the people choose the retrospective cohort but it is actually a prospective cohort okay so next important is your coat brown and doll study coat brown and doll study is a example of mixed cohort study so these two examples are a pretty high yield example they have asked you in question so you have to be very sure about that Coat Brown and Dahl study is mixed cohort, Framingham Heart study is prospective cohort, okay. And the incident rate is calculated from cohort study, while your prevalence rate is calculated from cross-sectional study. Your prevalence rate is calculated from cross-sectional study. And cross-sectional study is a snapshot of your population study. So consider there is a thousand five hundred people in a area and you are taking only the 15 people and you are doing a research on that 15 people and I'm and you are concluding that results this type of study while comparing this 15 people with the thousand five hundred people is a sample of your population entire yes or no so that is a snapshot your snapshot of your population study. So this type of study is known as cross-sectional study. And finally, you have your ecological study. <coughs> ecological study, the important MCQ only I want to emphasize here. Unit of study in ecological study is population. Pretty high yield MCQ that you should never neglect. Unit of study is a population in ecological study. Okay. Next. You have your errors. I am not talking about every errors here. What I am talking about is very few highlights here. Okay. As I told you already that this is a MCI rapid review course. Not a theory course of your PSM. Okay. So error bias. First thing you have to know is bias. So what is meant by bias? Systemic error in your epidemiological study is known as bias. So how can we reduce the bias by doing a blinding? So what are the types of blinding? There are three types of blinding, mainly single blinding, single blinding, double blinding and triple blinding. So single blinding means the case do not know what type of study is going on. While double blinding uh, means case as well as the investigator doesn't know. While triple blinding means case plus investigator plus the analyst doesn't know is known as triple blinding so for more exact result the triple blinding is a most preferred option for avoidance of your bias so next important comp uh, thing you have to know is your confounding so i'm going to mention only the high, uh, highlights here so how to how do we reduce our confounding confounding can be reduced by doing a randomization so randomization not only reduces the confounding but also reduce eliminates your selection bias how it is eliminating the selection bias for example you are choosing a people randomly instead of choosing like only the young people or only the old people or like only the diseased people or only the non diseased people so the people may be aware of what is happening here so the selection may be gives a wrong result or irrelevant result. So for avoidance of the selection bias, you have to do your randomization. So the randomization can be performed in the form of randomized clear control trial. So in the randomized control trial, in the randomized control trial, the unit of study is patient. Very, very important and secure. Unit of study is patient. Unit of study is patient in randomized control trial. 
while unit of study is population in a ecological study. Incidence can be calculated from cohort study. Prevalence can be calculated from cross-sectional study. So next important thing is like, what is the first important step in investigation of your epidemic? That is verification of diagnosis. That is your verification of diagnosis. Very, very important MCQ people. Okay, you should never forget. This is the verification of diagnosis. The first step in investigation of your epidemic. Okay, next to vaccines and the strains are pretty high yield. Uh, I have to mention you the important ones. I am listing out the important ones. So the premium users can able to easily uh, view the script of this video uh, so that you have to you don't need to take notes all you have to do is mug up tomorrow and uh, keep everything tomorrow vaccination and their strains are the one of the important mcq you can always ex, uh, expect so bcg it is a danish 1331 opv or ipv it is a p1 p2 or p3 p3 is always associated with the vaccine associated polio uh, what vaccine associated paralysis? Okay, so Japanese encephalitis, Nakayama or Beijing the P3 or SA 14142. Why I am mentioning here SA 14142 is one time they asked, like, what is a Japanese encephalitis strain that had been used in India? That had been used in India, so it is a SA 14142. Okay, one more important MCQ. And yellow fever, it is 17D strain. And varicella, it is OKA strain, that is a OKA strain. And malaria, it is a lighting cocktail or the masquerade strain. And mumps, it is gerilin strain. Measles, it is Edmonston Zagreb strain. And rubella, it is 27 parts, the RA 27 part 3 strain. Okay, so here the BCG, here the BCG, Japanese encephalitis. Varicella, mumps, measles, and rubella. The strains are pretty high yield. One time they asked like this vaccine vial monitor. So there are four grades of vaccine vial monitor. That is you have an outer circle which is covered in a blue and the uh, inner circle which is covered in a white. So this is your grade one of your vaccine vial monitor. So what happened when the days passes by, when the days passes by, then this color of your inner circle will pretty changes into a light blue color. So when the color of the file monitor will be light blue color, then it is a grade 2. Grade 1 and 2 are the usable vaccine. So when you, when, uh, when you keep the vaccine for a uh, prolonged time, then this blue color will turn darker and darker and the color outside will be more or less similar to color inside. So the color outside color and inside color are similar in grade 3 and for a grade 4 this inside color will become purplish or maybe black. May it become purplish or maybe black. So that is grade 4. So why I am emphasizing this is because one time they asked a picture based question of your vaccine vial monitor. I am not pretty sure about when they asked but maybe like a June 2018 I am, I am pretty sure. They given the grade 3 uh, vaccine vial monitor that is the outer circle and the inner square have a similar color. And they were asking like what grade this vaccine vial monitor is, uh, is given below. Okay, So that was grade 3. So you should know the color differences between grade 1, 2 and 3, 4. That's why I am emphasizing the vaccine while monitors colors. So next is your vaccination schedule. What is the vaccination you have to, what are the vaccines you can give right after the birth? BCG, OPV, Hepatitis B. And 6 weeks you have to give DPT, OPV, Hepatitis B, Influenza, Rotavirus, IPV1 and pneumococcal vaccine that is a PCV and uh, by 10th week you have to give all except this IPV and PCV1 and 14th week also it is similar to your 6th week schedule by 9th month you have to start your measles and 
mumps rubella vaccine measles and mumps rubella vaccine the vaccine side effect of your mmr vaccine side effect is known as uh, sorry the side effect of mmr vaccine is always toxic shock syndrome another important mcq that you should never neglect uh, while doing it so the side effect of your vaccine is your uh, mmr is your toxic shock syndrome toxic shock syndrome for influenza it is a guillain barre syndrome it is a guillain barre syndrome and for a polio you will get a vaccine associated paralytic polio b a p p okay so it is all about uh, your ninth month you have to initiate your vitamin a especially 1 lakh dose especially 1 lakh dose so for, and also you have to give japanese encephalitis and you have to give pneumococcal booster at the ninth month by the 16th month you have to give dpt booster opv booster measles mumps and rubella and japanese encephalitis so by 5th to 6th month you have to give your sorry 5th to 6th year you have to give your m dpt booster you have to give your dpt booster and by 10th year you have to give your tt and for 16 years you have to give your next tt and for pregnant women you have to give uh, tt in a two dosage with a one month of uh, schedule one month apart with the interval of one month so if the two doses of tt are already received but the tts have been received before 3 years then you have to give only one dose of tt booster so this is all about your vaccination schedule you have to mug up people that is a pretty high yield thing and mugging up stuff obviously you can't do anything except mugging up thing okay so what are the vaccines which are safe in pregnancy hepatitis a b influenza tetanus and rabies hepatitis a b influenza tetanus and rabies so the side effects is also pretty important and high yield you should never neglect and next important thing is like a mission indradhanush very very important mcq and mugging up thing there is no other way people lot a lot of mugging up stuff in psm you have to mug up even though it is a last minute spend tomorrow lot of time in reading each and every question i mean each and every word on this video lecture script and learn everything properly because these are the highly expected topic so the question will be asked is all of the following diseases have been covered by project indra dhanush or mission indra dhanush except project indra dhanush or mission indra dhanush except the most probably the things they going to ask is your uh, the exception going to be like your uh, mumps or rubella mumps or rubella will be the exceptions always so the project indra dhanush covers seven diseases namely diphtheria pertussis tetanus tuberculosis poliomyelitis hepatitis b and measles okay measles is a component of mission indra dhanush or project indra dhanush while mumps and rubella is not a component of your project indra dhanush second important thing you have to know in a vaccine is like a cold chain so cold chain the box you going to carry is your vaccination is your blue box and your reverse cold chain is happening in your polio reverse cold chain will be seen will happen in polio that is a uh, afp okay so flaccid paralysis cases you have to take your stool sample and this stool sample have to be traveled to your national virology center on pune so it is a reverse cold chain it is always carried out in a red box it is always carried out in a red box so blue box it is a cold uh, cold chain and reverse cold chain it is a red box so the red box is danger so danger contains your fecal matter so don't touch the red box okay and the most important component of your cold chain is a pretty high yield mcq ilr ice lined refrigerator and uh, the temperature monitoring of your cold chain is mediated by your dial thermometer is mediated by your dial thermometer 
and the highlights of a cold chain are like yellow fever is a vaccine which need to be maintained in a extremely cold conditions like minus 30 degree to plus 5 degree and the most vaccines are the temperature of most of the vaccines is like a 2 to 8 degree centigrade another important mcq and what is the vaccine which we can keep in a normal temperature that is another important mcq that is vitamin a these are the important things you have to know people next we're going to see about your communication and communicable and non-communicable diseases i'm going to talk about only the highlights i'm not going to explain you each and every part okay so communicable and non-communicable in uh, trimesters are pretty high yield these trimesters are pretty high yield because uh, how they ask the question is like mm, the first trimester vax varicella and rubella rubella is especially most virulent or most disastrous in your first trimester you should never forget that uh, rubella is the most disastrous on your first trimester and in your second trimester parvovirus infection second parvovirus infection and in the third trimester it is your syphilis toxoplasmosis syphilis toxoplasmosis hepatitis b and cmv cytomegalovirus and during delivery hiv hepatitis c and herpes so this hiv hepatitis c and herpes are pretty high yield okay why because they used to ask you like a question like a pregnant women who is having a hiv positive uh, is detected hiv positive and she is currently third trimester so what type of what is the possibility of that hiv infection will be transmitted to the fetus so the hiv infection will be transmitted during your delivery so not through the uh, not during your first or second or third trimester so this is important one and the host highlights i am mentioning here because host highlights are pretty important one i am going to ask you they are going to ask you the straightforward questions so i am uh, compiling up the straightforward questions so no need to worry about everything so man is a secondary host on malaria important mcq man is a secondary host on malaria and a man is a only host on that is a obligate host in measles and thyroid sorry measles and typhoid measles and typhoid and man is a dead end host in echinococcus canine man is a dead end host in echinococcus canine infection so these are the pretty high yield things you have to know and uh, next important is your incubation periods and the highlights so the incubation period you have to know your smallpox the inf uh, incubation period is 7 to 14 days uh, you can see the important highlights of your smallpox that is a dew drop on rose petals and a pleomorphic rash is seen uh, rest all covered will be rest all will be covered in your microbiology session i don't want to emphasize much here measles incubation period is 10 to 14 days incubation period is 10 to 14 days and a rare complication of measles is sspe important mcq rare complication you should know rare complication is ssp subsclerosing pan encephalitis and coplic spots are seen in measles another important mcq coplic spots are seen in measles and the most common complication of your measles is otitis media mc complication most common complication of measles is otitis media that you should never neglect okay next you have your rubella uh, incubation period of rubella is very important uh, rubella you have to know your congenital rubella syndrome i told you that it is a, it affects your first trimester i already told you this yes or no and triad of your congenital rubella syndromes is also pretty important one so the first one is your sensory neural deafness and the second one is your cataract and the third one is your congenital cardiac anomaly that is your especially patent ductus arteriosus okay so the cataract you see on a congenital rubella along with the cataract you will see that a salt and pepper fundus salt and pepper fundus is a characteristic feature of your rubella or cataract okay you have to know salt and pepper fundus
salt and pepper fundus is a important characteristic feature of your rubella cataract and triad of congenital rubella syndrome sensory neural deafness cataract and pda okay so next is your mumps important side effect is your aseptic meningitis another important one uh, whooping cough 7 to 14 days whooping cough is also known as 100 day cough 100 day cough caused by bordetella pertussis bordetella pertussis okay meningococcal it is 3 to 4 days and uh, treatment for a meningococcal is always an important mcq question for a drug of choice for cases it is penicillin and for carriers it is rifampicin you should never forget meningococcal meningitis or neisseria meningitis cases penicillin carrier rifampicin all the hepatitis viruses in infections and incubation period are very very important you should never neglect even though you don't know other uh, uh, incubation period is also fine but you have to know this hepatitis incubation period this is a very high yield thing that like a five star rating that is like a five star rating you should never neglect it okay so i can say you like the incubation period of hepatitis b so a it is 15 to 45 b 45 to 180 c 30 to 120 d 30 to 90 e 21 to 45 so the uh, most predominantly they will ask this b and c to confuse you 45 to 180 180 means approximately six months is hepatitis b so four months it is your hepatitis c four for c six for d six for b okay b6 c4 you should never forget that and the next important thing is like you they will ask you the incubation period of your plasmodium falciparum another important one and uh, nipa virus 14 to 16 days there is a possibility of that uh, mcq need to be asked and uh, diphtheria it is two to six days and uh, most common type of diphtheria is a partial type and the shift test is a test used for the diagnosis of diphtheria these are the important incubation period and their highlights people you should never forget and next important thing is your uh, influenza uh, why i am mentioning here influenza is there are a lot of serotypes are there important one is your swine flu and bird flu h1n1 is swine flu and h5n1 is your bird flu uh, that is avian flu you should never forget these things these are important and highlighted mcq you should always expect for the exam and oseltamivir dosage is pretty high yield for infra it is a three to six months 20 mg bd for five days for six to eleven months 20 mg bd for five days and for six to eleven months it is a 25 mg for bd for five days they asked this question once like a dosage of oseltamivir in a children is with this three to six months old so it is like a 20 mg bd for five days the question was asked like 20 mg od 20 mg bd 20 mg uh, td and uh, 25 mg od okay uh, and for five days okay so this is important one you should never forget the dosage of oseltamivir for the children you have to drug of choices for uh, influenza uh, next important is your vector and disease transmission so next important thing in your uh, psm is your vector and uh, disease transmission pretty high yield you will always expect one question either an image based question or maybe like a, what is a, what can we say either an image based question or maybe like a direct mcq so housefly anthrax trachoma polio yaws and dysenterial diseases so tsetse fly african sleeping sickness sand fly kalazar or oraya fever red wig bug causes chagas disease soft tick causes q fever or relapsing fever hard tick causes rocky mountain spotted fever and tick typhus and louse causes epidemic fever and trench fever mite causes scrub typhus flea causes plague or murin typhus Anopheles causes malaria, Culex causes bankruptian filariasis, 
Japanese encephalitis, West Nile fever, and viral arthritis. Okay, so AIDS causes yellow fever, dengue, chikungunya, Rift Valley fever, and Zika virus infection. So next we have your mansoidus causes your malaria and filariasis and chikungunya. So all of them is things are like a mugging of stuff. Uh, stuff people, I can't able to explain everything. And this is a rapid review session, so I can't able to explain each and every part of time and spending so much time on this. So uh, take the script and read every possible infections. Okay. So house fly, uh, but I'm gonna highlight you here the important one. Say it say it is African sleeping sickness. Say it say it is African sleeping sickness. And kala azar, it is a sand fly. Kala azar, it is a sand fly. Rocky Mountain Spot and Fever, it is a heart tick. Q Fever, soft tick. Scrub Typhus, mite. Malaria, anopheles. Japanese Encephalitis, Bancroftian, West Nile Fever, it is a Q-Lex. Yellow Fever, Aedes, Dengue, Aedes, Chikungunya, Aedes, Rift Valley Fever, Aedes. And Malayan Filariasis, it is Mansoidus. So these are the important things they will ask you. So remember one more time, African sleeping sickness, say it's a fly. Kalazar, sand fly. Q fever, soft tick. Rocky mountain spotted fever, hard tick. Uh, trench fever, louse. Scrub typhus, mite. Um, malaria, anopheles. Bantroptian filariasis or Japanese encephalitis or West Nile fever, it is always Q-Lex and yellow fever, dengue, Rift Valley fever, Aedes and Malayan filariasis, Mansoidus and Q-Lex is also known as Nuisance Mosquito. One more important MCQ you should never forget. Q-Lex is also known as Nuisance Mosquito and Aedes is also known as Tiger Mosquito. Very very important MCQ people you should never neglect these things. Okay. So these type of things cannot be neglected and the one mosquito image you can always expect in the exam as a picture based question. So I am here by mentioning you the important images of mosquito. You have your anaphylus mosquito and Q-Lex mosquito and Aedes mosquito. So the, look over the images again and again for 2-3 times so that you can memorize the picture. So these type of picture will be given in the exam for you people. So several times they had asked about your Q-Lex and Aedes or sometimes they may ask you about Anopheles also. So that's why I mentioned these three uh, mosquitoes images. Okay. So Malayan fever it is caused by Mansonia, sorry, Mansonia, Mansoidus, Mansoidus it causes a Malarian uh, filariasis. Dengue is caused by Aegis aegypti. Bantroptian filariasis is caused by Q-Lex. Malaria, it is always anopheles and the scrub typhus, it is always mite. Scrub typhus, mite. Malaria, anopheles. Bancroft filariasis, Q-lex. Q-lex is also known as nuisance mosquito. Yellow fever or dengue, it is Aedes. Aedes is also known as tiger mosquito. Malayan filariasis, mansoidus. Clear with the thing? So definitely you can uh, expect a one host and a disease transmission question. People, you, sh you can never neglect these things, okay? Spend some time on mugging up these things tomorrow. And uh, next important thing is your RNTCP. Active case finding is door-to-door -door screening. One more important MCQ. Active case finding is door-to-door -door screening. And active surveillance is required. That is a healthcare system goes to the patient. And for a resistant TB, the diagnosis can be made is if the resistor, if the TB is resistant to rifampicin, then the diagnosis of choice is CB-NAT. If the TB is resistant to rifampicin and isoniazid, then the diagnosis of choice is LPA. LPA. You should never forget these two important MCQ. Next, you have your daily treatment regimen. That is category 1 or new cases. 2 months of your uh, incubation period that is a 2 months of your HR is a T drug and 4 months of your HRE for the continuation period. So this should be continued for 6 months. And category 2 is a previously treated cases. 
HR is a TES will be two months, HR is a T will be one month, and HRE will be five months. So now what happened was the category three and category two, all these things are merged into category one. So if the patient is missed for more than one month, then he is he had to take the category one uh, profile one following regimen. Okay. So dots incentive salaries are another important uh, MCQ based one for your R and TCP revised national tuberculosis control program. I mean. Uh, category one will receive a thousand rupees, and for successful completion of category two, also receive a thousand rupees. So for category one and two, for the successful completion, receive a thousand rupees as an incentive, while category four and five will receive five thousand rupees as an incentive. Okay, category four and five will receive a five thousand rupees as an incentive. Expansion of R and TCP is also one of the important MCQ. Revised National Tuberculosis Control Program. You should never forget this. And leprosy three drug regimen is there: rifampicin, dapsone, and uh, copazamine. Okay. So, paribasilary dosage should be done for six uh, months, and for multibasilary dosage should be done for twelve months. Another important MCQ. You should never forget. And malaria control program. Drug of choices are important. For a Vivax, chloroquine for three days and a primaquine for 14 days. Chloroquine for three days and primaquine for uh, 14 days. And false param we can divide either into Act SP or Act AL. Act SP you have to give artesunate for three days and sulfadoxine for on first day, pyrimethamine for first day and primaquine on second day. And for Act AL condition you have to give. At all stages, you have to give artemether for three days and lumifrantin for three days and primaquine on second day. So, act AL is practiced in northeastern states of India. Another important MCQ. Northeastern states of India. Okay. So, this is all about it. And for color coding, is also important. For the malarial uh, drug kit, for a kid with a zero to one year old, the kit uh, will be in a purple color. One to four year old, yellow color. Five to eight year old, it is a green color. Nine to fourteen year old, it is a red color. And fifteen plus, it is a white color. So this is all about your kit coloring. And next important coloring you have to know is your bio biomedical waste management. Yellow bag always contain your animal waste, human waste, solid waste, now expired medicine. So this is having a maximum probability expired medicines are placed in yellow bag, and micro waves are placed in yellow bag, and contaminated waste it is always a red bag, and metallic and sharp waste it is always a white bag, and glass wares are in blue bag. Glass wares, expired medicine. And the sharp waste or the high yield expired medicine, it is always a yellow bag. Human waste, yellow bag. Animal waste, yellow bag. Glass bag, blue bag. Contaminated waste, red bag. Metallic or sharp waste, it is always a white bag. So these are the important color coding of your bags. And the next important thing you have to remember in the money issues is your JSSK package, Janani Sisu Suraksha Karya Karam. So, Janani Sisu Suraksha Karya Kram. The incentives are pretty important for a low-performing state. The incentive for the mother is 1,400 rupees, and for Asha worker 600 rupees. That is the providence of incentive to the people for the uh, uh, delivery of your baby. Okay, for a high-performing state, mother will get 700 rupees, and Asha worker will get 600 rupees as a incentive. For urban low performing, it is thousand and four hundred. Urban high performing, six hundred and four hundred. One of the important and uh, high yield topic. So read everything and you have to learn everything and keep the values straight, uh, straight on your mind. Don't make any mistake. They may ask you low performing rural mother will receive how much? So low performing rural mother will get thousand. Low performing urban mother will get sorry low performing rural mother will get thousand four hundred low performing urban mother will get thousand high performing rural mother will get seven hundred 
high performing urban mother will get 600 okay asha workers incentive will be like a 600 for low performing rural and a high performing rural 400 for urban either it is a low performing or high performing it doesn't matter okay so jssk incentives are pretty important next important thing you have to know is your health care in india health care in india you, you have your uh, sub health center which is a heart uh, and a heart of your health care india is another important mcq that is your anganwadi anganwadis are the heart of your health care system in india okay one more important mcq so you have your sub health center which is for the 3000 to 5000 population whatever i am quoting here are your rural population okay so for a uh, sub health center uh, the population required is 2000 to 5000 and how many workers will be on the sub health center it is a two anm workers and one multi purpose worker and this sub health center have to report to public health center so public health center is for 20000 to 40000 people 20000 to 30000 people sorry 20000 to 13 30000 people will have a one phc and for a staff allotment for a phc the total number of staffs on phc will be uh, 15 total number of staffs on phc will be 15 sorry uh, and the phc will uh, the next level is your chc 80000 to 100 uh, 120000 80000 to 120000 so this 80000 to 120000 will have your chc and 30 to 31 staff will be working out there and the district hospital it is for 10000 people or 10 sorry 10 lakh people you will have your district hospital so health care system in india heart of health care system is your anganwadi for rural 5000 people you will have one sub health center and for a rural 30000 people you have your one phc and the staff count on phc should be 15 and for chc it is 80000 to 1 lakh 20000 people and staff count will be 30 to 31 and for district hospital it is uh, 10 lakh people and district hospital in turn refer to medical college so the highest referral center is medical colleges okay next you have to know about your esi and factories act so the percentages are pretty important in esi act esi act was launched in 1948 factories act is also launched in 1948 and employee have to contribute 1.75 percentage percentage of contribution is pretty important employee will contribute 1.75 percentage employer will contribute 4.75 percentage and sickness benefit is always given to the employee for 91 days how many percentage of salary will be provided to the employee 70 percentage of his salary will be provided to the employee for the sickness benefit and how long he have to work uh, how long he can get the sickness benefit for 91 days and for factories act what is the space which is given for minimum space required for your workers in the factory act as 500 cubic feet per a worker for one worker it is always 500 cubic feet so very very important mcq and one safety officer for 5 1000 people one safety officer for 1000 people and one welfare officer for 500 people and one canteen for more than 250 people and one creche for 30 women if the more than 30 women is working in a factory then one creche will be uh, required if more than 250 people is working in a factory you have to provide a canteen if more than 500 people is working you have to appoint a one welfare officer if more than 1000 people is working you have to appoint one safety officer and for the space allotment for one person one worker in a factory is act as 500 cubic feet per worker next important is your environmental and health i am discussing only the highlights and only important mcqs okay so the first one is your horex apparatus horex uh, horex apparatus it is a uh, why you are having a horex apparatus for the estimation of chloride 
demand one more important mcq what is the solution you used here starch iodide will be used in your forex apparatus these are the very very high yield mcq they will ask you in a water contamination okay so for a swimming pool you have to have a chlorine concentration of greater than 2 greater than 2 another important mcq and for chloroscope chloroscope is used for the measurement of residual chlorine measurement of residual chlorine chloroscope chlorine demand estimation it is forex apparatus and you have your air humidity air humidity is always calculated by dry and wet bulb thermometer hygrometer sling psychometer so the what the questions they ask is mostly sling or grilling psychrometer is used for air humidity and what is the best indicator for your air pollution sulfur dioxide gas another important mcq the best indicator of your air pollution is sulfur dioxide gas and best biological indicator of your uh, air pollution is your lichens is your lichens another important mcq okay what is a maximum tolerable sound you can uh, do is you, that the human body can able to take is maximum of 85 to 90 decibel whatever i am shooting up here is your pretty straight forward questions you can't able to change the values simply you have to mug up okay and a hospital will have a noise levels of 20 to 35 decibel hospital will have a noise uh, levels of 20 to 35 decibels and for a jet taking off it causes your ear damage ear drum damage that is a uh, sound of 150 to 160 decibel 150 to 160 decibels and according to the standard housing criteria the floor area of your house should be 50 to 100 uh, square feet per person 50 to 100 square feet per person is a standard housing criteria okay next important thing you have to know is your definition of sewage and sewage so the sewage and sewage the important one is your what is the definition of sewage sewage the definition is liquid waste plus excreta liquid waste plus excreta if the liquid waste is having a excreta then it is called the sewage if the liquid waste do not contain an excreta then it is called as then it is called as sewage then it is called as sewage and what type of desk are used by the students on a school minus desk minus desk another important mcq minus desks are always preferred in schools okay this is all about the important highlights of your environmental and health next important highlights is your committees you can barely expect a one question from committee for bore committee it is a social introduction of social physicians introduction of school health and one phc per 40000 this is a bore committee and multi purpose workers are introduced in qatar singh committee and health survey and planning committee is mudaliyar committee malaria elimination program is started by chadda committee and basic health services formed by mukherjee committee equal pay for equal work and no private practice for uh, doctors is done by jangalwala committee and separate worker for family planning that is a uh, they differentiated that malaria elimination program that is a health worker for malaria control program and family planning they separated these two pro programs and they appointed a separate worker for family planning when in the mukherjee committee and higher level of referral centers were established in shrivastava committee and urban revamping scheme was introduced in krishnan committee and educational commission was established in bajaj committee all the committees and their highlights have been mentioned here read some time people most of the things are mugging up stuff i am so sorry psf is a, psm is a vague subject and you have to learn a lot of things and you always get a lot of things from psm 
so try to read and try to remember all the things tomorrow itself okay so what is the iq iq is cas uh, iq the formula for calculating your intelligent quotient is mental age by chronological age into uh, 100 mental age by chronological age into 100 very very important mcq you should never leave okay and iq value of each person are important idiot it is 0 to 24 imbecile it is 25 to 49 moron it is 50 to 69 and normal it is 90 to 109 and for genius 140 above so the mostly they will ask about the imbecile and the idiot 0 to 24 and 25 to 49 okay and the family cycle is having a following components family cycle is also important mcq what they will ask is like the basis of family cycle are formation extension complete extension contraction contraction complete contraction and dissolution okay formation extension complete extension contraction and complete contraction and dissolution so from marriage to first child it is your formation first child to last child it is your extension first child to last child it is your extension and last child to first child leaving home it is complete extension first child leaving to last child leaving first child leaving to last child leaving it is contraction last child leaving to first spouse die, dying it gives rise to complete contraction and first spouse dies and death of a survivor gives rise to dissolution of your family so this is the cycle of your family and last but not least we have some highlights in bio statistics so these are the pretty things you i know a lot of people are confused with the calculation and they don't want to do the bio statistics chapter so people pretty uh, focus on these highlights these are straight forward questions you should not miss what if you are lucky enough and you got this questions on the exam you should not miss right so the normal distribution curve is pretty important that is a bell shape mean plus one standard deviation covers 68 percentage of the population or the values or the given values while mean plus 2 standard deviation gives 95% mean plus 3 standard deviation gives 99% so the question may be asked in the format of mean plus 1 standard deviation covers 68% mean plus 2 standard deviation covers 95.45% mean plus 3 standard deviation covers 99.7% and you have your normal deviation where mean is equal to mode is equal to median mean is equal to mode is equal to median so what they will ask is mode is a most frequently occurring value is known as mode so for example they give you 10 to 12 sequence and they will ask you like what is a direct mode value of this so highly repetitive one you have to choose for example this sequence contains like a one for example this sequence will be like 1 2 3 3 4 5 and 1 2 3 Consider and the mean, uh, sorry, mode value of this is your one is your three because three repeats for three times, while two repeats for two times and one repeats for two times and four five do not repeat. Okay, so the mode value is three and for a mean value you have to add all and divided by depending upon the uh, if it is an odd number you have to add the formula for calculating mean is n plus one divided by two. formula for calculating mean is n plus 1 divided by 2 while for formula for calculating and for formula for calculating a even sequence is n by 2 okay and for a mean median value it should be the central value arrange all the number in ascending order and arrange it in a central value for a normal distribution mean is always equal to mode and mode is always equal to median and for a right skew distribution mean median and mode mean will be greater than median and median will be greater than mode and for left skew distribution mode will be greater than median and median will be greater than mean so this is all about your psm people very very important topic for your mci and it is a ruler of your morning paper so 
if your psm if you cover these concepts on which was given on your script then i am pretty sure you can score very good on your uh, psm so i wanted to emphasize the last and one uh, minute review here that you should never miss father of homeopathy samuel any man father of medicine hippocrates indian surgery shishrata father of public health cholera epidemiology john snow first fingerprint india first socialized medicine russia first compulsory sickness insurance germany isolation is separation of cases quarantine is separation of healthy individual hda of india 0.64 ppla of india 65 what are the parameters for hda life expectancy at birth knowledge income parameters of pqli life expectancy at 1 year old literacy rate infant mortality rate okay One dal is equal to YLL plus YLD, and uh, case fatality rate of rabies 100 percent, and case fatality rate of chicken pox is less than 1 percent. Drug uh, diseases which do not follow Iceberg phenomena: measles, tetanus, rabies, rubella, MTR, Rava, and first identifiable case is known as index case. So, uh, submerged portion of Iceberg phenomena indicates hidden cases. and the sentinel surveillance is responsible for finding of missing cases okay eradication of uh, eradication is global phenomenon clearing out from the roots waha in a world had eradicated only one disease till now chicken pox sorry small pox in 1980 india had eliminated till now four diseases quinoa worm leprosy yas tetanus okay prevention primordial prevention risk factor prevention primary prevention disease prevention secondary prevention uh, early diagnosis and treatment tertiary prevention disability limitation okay uh, icd 11 contains three volumes and 22 chapter is prevalence is a ratio no it is a proportion prevalence is not a ratio not a rate it is a proportion is mmr is a rate no it is a ratio multiplication used in mmr 1 lakh relative risk is a strength of association in cohort study while odds ratio is the strength of association in case control study formula for odds ratio ad by bc cfr for rabies 100% cfr is equal to number of death divided by number of case into 100 okay uh, bhopal gas tragedy is a single source point exposure sorry single exposure point source epidemic case control study is a retrospective study and uh, cohort study is a prospective study cost to effect study is cohort study effect to cost study is case control study uh, unit of study in ecological uh, study is population unit of study uh, unit of study in a uh, randomized controlled st- trials is patient bias can be reduced by blinding confounding can be reduced by randomization first important step in investigation of epidemic uh, verification of diagnosis uh, Oka strain is used for varicella, uh, Danish 1331, BCG, Edmonton Zagreb, measles, Jarrell-Lynn, mumps, uh, vaccination given at birth, BCG. All live attenuated vaccines are contraindicated in pregnancy except yellow fever. All live attenuated vaccines are contraindicated in pregnancy except yellow fever. Okay. What is the uh, most common side effect of uh, MMR vaccine? toxic shock syndrome influenza vaccine quillian barre syndrome cold chain ilr most important component blue box reverse cold chain red box uh, rubella congenital tri- rubella triad is your uh, rubella cataract sensory neural deafness and pda so hepatitis b incubation period 45 to 180 days hepatitis c incubation period 30 to 120 days and you have your Uh, most common type of diphtheria partial type and uh, bird flu h1n1 sorry h5n1 swine flu h1n1 and uh, culex transmit japanese encephalitis aedes transmit dengue anopheles transmit malaria scrub typhus mite rntcp uh, diagnosis is trypanosome resistant cbnat trypanosome and isoniazid resistant lpa okay so the color coding human waste yellow back glass waste blue back metallic waste white back expired medicine yellow back okay uh, next horex apparatus estimation of chlorine demand chloroscope measurement of residual chlorine 
uh, sling and drilling psychrometer, measurement of air humidity, floor area according to housing criteria, 550 to 100 square feet per person, and jet taking of sound, 150 to 160 decibels, and the desk used in uh, schools, minus desk, full age, liquid waste without excreta, sewage, liquid waste with excreta, and uh, uh, separate worker for family planning, Mukherjee committee, higher level of referral centers, Srivastav committee, basic health care service, Mukherjee committee, no private practice of doctors, Jungalwala committee, IQ for idiot, 0 to 24, normal IQ, 90 to 109, family cycle phases, formation, extension, complete extension, contraction, complete contraction and dissolution. Uh, mean plus 1 standard deviation covers 68%, mean plus 2 standard deviation covers 95.45%, mean plus 3 standard deviation covers 99.7%. For a normal uh, distribution, mean is equal to mode is equal to median. So I am here by concluding the PSM. You should be very much clear about all the important points of your PSM and all the best, all the very best for your exam. And I am here by quitting the day one.